The next stop on our learning journey is a burger joint, enough to feed friends and family. A burger joint may seem like an odd place to learn about code organization, but let's see where this goes. Tackling any large set of tasks requires some amount of organization. Say we work at a burger restaurant. We could define the process like this. Take the customer's order. If the customer ordered fries, make the fries. Then here are the instructions for making the fries. If the customer ordered a burger, make the burger. And here are the instructions for making the burger. Put the items in a box. Repeat at step one. Look at these sublists of tasks. To keep our main list of instructions more straightforward and easier to follow, we can move these sublists to separate sets of instructions. Here is our list for making fries and our list for making a burger. Then we reference those instructions in the main flow like this. So each separate list of instructions is clearly defined, and the main flow is easier to see without all of those sublists. In programming, we call each of these self-contained sets of instructions a function. Let's stop at this point and think about this. What are some benefits of breaking out some of these instructions into functions? Thoughts? Well, when creating the function, we can focus only on that function and ensure we think through every step. It also makes it easier to work as a team. Jesse can make the fries, Chris make the burgers, and Sandia follows the main flow, taking orders. Can you think of other benefits? In programming, a function is a self-contained set of instructions to accomplish a chunk of a larger task. A function separates responsibilities for a specific part of a task, making the main task easier to work with and read. Functions add structure to our programs and make them easier to read and modify over time. And here's a tip. Code is often read much more often than it's written, so make your code readable. When writing code, functions look something like this. But the details may look a bit different depending on the programming language. A function often takes in some information, performs the set of instructions using that information, and gives back, or returns, a result. So we can say, hey, Chris, here is a patty, bun, and condiments. Go grill that burger, toast the bun, add the condiments, and bring it back to me when it's done. Functions are often named with the task they perform, following a verb-object-style naming convention, like make fries and make burger. The name is followed by a list of the information that the function needs. In this example, this information is enclosed in parentheses and separated with commas. For our make fries, we need the fries, and for the burger, we need a patty, bun, and condiments. The function body contains the set of instructions required for this function. In many cases, a function performs its set of steps and returns a result. So lastly, we return that result. The result is often indicated with a return statement. Let's look at another example from our online pet cafe. Recall that the user enters the type and number of pets and clicks Adopt. The application then displays a message and a greeting from each of the pets. We want to simplify our main set of instructions by separating out the feature that prepares the pet greeting. We define a function for those instructions as shown here. We won't get into the specifics of the syntax of this code now. We cover JavaScript syntax in the Gentle Introduction to JavaScript for Beginners course. But you can get a general sense of what a function does. This one is named Prepare Greeting. To perform its set of instructions, it needs the type and number of pets, which we pass in here. This is the function body where we prepare the greeting. If it's a cat, we add a meow for each pet. If it's a dog, we append woof for each pet. We then return that resulting greeting to the main set of instructions. So, we use a function to define a self-contained set of instructions for a chunk of a larger task. Separating our code into functions has several advantages. When building or maintaining the function, we can focus just on that function, what information it needs, what steps it performs, and what result it provides. It helps separate work for a team, assigning each independent function to a member of the team. We can simplify the main set of instructions, making it easier to read and maintain over time. 
and we can more easily reuse the function in multiple places in the application. In many cases, functions and other instructions need information, or data, to adequately perform their operations. Let's talk about data next.